How many people are feeling hopeful and optimistic about 2024? Yeah. Excellent. I am as well. Um, I just think there's been so many great things in 2023 and that 2024 is just going to be even better. And I'm talking globally. So feel very, very excited about that. Thank you all for being here. I want to just let you know that the goal of this event is really, you see all the people around the room? These are all of our community partners who are working in the area of housing and homelessness. So we thought it very, very important for them to be here. And so our presentations usually are very long-winded. This time, I'm going to be like, I have two slides, because the goal is for you all to get to know all of our community partners. And so we're not going to uh, take questions when I'm at the podium or when Mayor Gates and Sherry come up. What we're going to do, though, is we will be here afterwards. And so if folks have specific questions or want to talk more in depth, be happy, happy to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is our communications and engagement team made a really excellent video of the city's housing, um, supportive housing team. And so I am going to talk a little bit about that, but the video is going to tell you everything you need to know. Good evening. I'm Mayor John Gates. The city of Greeley recognizes that homelessness is a growing and complex issue across the nation and our community. City Council's immediate response was the creation of a housing and homelessness department. A subsequent step was to create the Mayor's Task Force on Homelessness to bring our community together. Every person deserves a place to call home. Housing First is an effective and evidence-based model that we use in Greeley. It doesn't just provide a home, but also a support system from a team of professionals. The city's goal was to reduce homelessness in the city by 70% in four years. Please join us in our efforts to address homelessness. Well, when I first came homeless, I thought the whole world had caved in me. When you see someone on the street and they're clearly suffering, I think the natural conclusion that you draw is that their homelessness is related to their clinical problems. Most people are in the gray in life, you know, and without listening to the individual and working with them, you're like trying to force something onto somebody that doesn't help you. The reason we did this as a city and why many cities and county governments are getting more involved directly in human services, especially related to homelessness, is because the issue has become so large. People in Greeley have wanted to see a change and want to help the community members here who are experiencing homelessness. Housing First is known as bringing someone from the streets into housing, but it's actually a little more complicated than that in the sense that there are a lot of services involved every step of the way. The first is housing without any kind of specific requirements. Even the offer of housing begins not with the program saying that you're going to be housed, but the program saying, how can I help you? There can be a level of mistrust from the healthcare system. They might have been treated poorly, had negative experiences before, and that impacts their willingness to actually go seek treatment. So what I tell people is it's sort of flipping the scenario. We're putting the power back in the hands of the patient. We're allowing them to invite us into their home or into their residence. And they're in their comfort setting. They're surrounded by the things they love or if they have family or caregivers around, they're in that position of control. And it totally changed the dynamic for the patients. Do you want me to drop it a few more degrees? It's a little cooler in here than yesterday. There's a third principle, which is a recovery principle. Once you start working with people and you build those reports and connections, you really don't have to tell people to do things. That's what they want to do. They want to be successful. They want to move on. They want to be better in life. So it just happens. I mean, we've talked a lot about housing people and keeping them housed, which I would call achieving housing stability. 
yes, someone will get a place and they'll stay there. But the real goal of the program is all of the visits that happen after the person is housed. We want the person to recover their life. One of the uh, really uh, excellent components of the Greeley program is that the person that you meet on the street and you're engaging in a conversation from day one is the same person that follows you to help you get housed and follows you after your house. That kind of continuity of care, it makes it more efficient and it makes it more effective in terms of engaging people because that relationship is there right from the start. So the fifth principle is community integration. That is the point of all of this, right? It's not just to get into housing. It's not just to reach, you know, X, Y, Z goal. It's to become part of the fabric of our community. My job is not physically hard, but it could be mentally hard. But it's the greatest job in the world when you can actually sit down and talk to people and there's no judgment on either side. Oh, it feels good, feels good. Feels a little bit strange too, you know, but it feels good. And it's made a big difference with this program. I hope I'm doing a good job because I'm housed, I'm safe, and I'm off the streets. If I could just have everyone be open and willing to learn, ask questions, come to meetings, you know, come for a ride along. I mean, it works. It, it's a great program. It works. You know, it's not easy, but it's a great program. That is the goal of what we're trying to do, right, is to help them, you know, get integrated back into Greeley and become, you know, the productive, hopeful person that they were before all of this happened. I've got to say a big thank you to everyone who's willing to participate in that, the people that we're serving to our communications and engagement team. I think they did a really professional and fabulous job. Um, and that's just a, a snapshot, but I think you kind of feel the energy that comes from that, which is the care and compassion that it takes, as well as seeing people in their home and really providing those intensive services and following what they need and realizing that it's not our case managers can't do it alone right again why we have all of these people here at their tables and we actually have Dr. Lumlung who uh, is over there Origins Healthcare unbelievable what she's been able to do we have hooked many people up with medical care and there's been others who it that's either hasn't been uh, worked for them or it's not enough. Like we have a person who's had a stroke and we see him twice a day. He has um, other in-home health supports, not enough, right? And ultimately I think this unit isn't gonna exactly work out for him. But in the meantime, we're doing everything we can for him to be successful and to be safe. So thank you. And this is, I wanted to give you just some, sorry. I wanted to give you some specifics about the foundation's team. Um, we started May of 2023 and really the end of May. And so since that time, we've had 57 households leased up and that represents those 75 individuals um, and some of those were people who were actually not officially part of our program but we got a call and we met someone who was like 85 years old living in a trailer with no heat and fortunately Immaculata Plaza had recently opened up senior housing and so the team worked with that person to help get them in there and there's been a few like that. I think it's really important to know for the people that we're working with, the average length of time that they have been in Greeley is 26 years, right? Because that's a question frequently get, you know, are these people who are just coming from Denver? Are they, you know, how long have they been here? So these are our people, right? Um, and then you'll see these others that people that we've connected to medical care, mental health and substance abuse services. 
21 out of our 57. So goal is to certainly get that higher, but we've also been what working 10 months, I think. And so far, I actually didn't ask the team today, no one's been evicted. We did have, which I would hope not, right? We won't, we start in May. Um, but I really wanna be super clear that this all sounds great and it really is, but it's also uh, messy, right? We have fortunately some property managers and landlords who are as committed to the people that we're serving um, as we are and really willing to work with us. I think one of the things that helps with that is we have an on-call number 24 seven and that is for the people we're serving, that is for the landlord. Um, and the, our number one goal is to be responsive and close that loop and let them know what we're doing to address the concerns. And then coming up 2024, so we were very fortunate to receive um, a significant grant from the state as well. I know that our United Way partners did also, and so be partnering and working very closely with them. Um, and that is allowing us to create an outreach team and that will operate seven days a week, 10 hours a day, and we've hired our first three of 11, and two of them are right over there. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining our efforts. Uh, and then ultimately this goal will allow us to house uh, 80 more people into permanent housing. And then I also, I think it's very important to talk about sort of the other side of this, of, of what we do here in terms of housing in general. And we are gonna have a lot of information about our G-HOPE program. I'm looking at Ashley because she runs that program. And that's a down payment assistance program for people wanting to maybe buy their first home, living in uh, Greeley, east of 35th, yes. And then uh, we're also kind of revamping our owner-occupied rehab because we talk a lot about building. We certainly need to be building, but we also have to ensure that people are able to stay in the homes that they currently are in. So that's a fantastic program. Let's see, what else we got here? <laughs> so official launch of the Mayor's Task Force is coming out. We just started and I'm actually gonna now transition to that. Um, and our official launch will be sometime this spring uh, and we'll tell you the very specific goals that we have. And Mayor Gates did mention that uh, the, probably the most significant goal is in four years, reduce total homelessness by 70%. But we have to also focus on the prevention side. And that is a huge piece that uh, is still being developed. But if we don't get that going, everything we're doing to get people housed is in some ways working against the tide. So in terms of mayor's task force, this is a cross section of community leaders many of them who are here right now. And we did that because any community who has been successful in moving the needle has done the exact same thing. You have to have collabor collaboration across all sectors. And there's a great example of Milwaukee. Has anybody heard about the Milwaukee story? <coughs> yeah, oh good, excellent. <laughs> well, their last street count, they had 17 people unsheltered. And so we took uh, some leaders from our city, um, both internally and externally, and the external folks paid their own way, which 
I think also shows how committed they are. And one of them is Bianca. I'm sure many of you know Bianca Fisher, who leads our DDA. And she's a runner. So, and she went a little bit early, uh, like a day early, and she ran all over Milwaukee, every opportunity she had, like literally ran. And then at the end of our very intensive kind of two day trip for her, uh, she came up to me and she's a skeptic, which is good, right? We need skeptics. We need people to ask hard questions. She came up to me and she said, Juliana, do you know how many homeless people I saw? I said, no, I thought she'd tell me 50 or something. She said three. So I think that is providing a lot of momentum to see it can be done. And so I have to thank Mayor Gates and our council members. None of this would be happening without them. And I always say this to Mayor Gates, but knowing that Mayor Gates, the rest of our council, our city manager has our back and is fully supportive because they get complaints every single day about these issues. And yet they're staying the course and could not be more grateful for that. So Sherry, would you also join us? Because you went to Milwaukee and you're part of our mayor's task force. Go ahead, have a seat here. Actually, you might have to. Amy, do they have to come up? Or can they share the mic between themselves? Okay, y'all come on up. And if you don't mind saying just a few words about Mayor's Task Force and what you learned in Milwaukee, just a couple takeaways. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm uh, Sherry Wood Brown. I serve as the CEO of Greeley Wealth Habitat for Humanity. So you could say <clears throat> housing is incredibly important. And what we saw in Milwaukee gave me hope, not just for the creative ideas that they were doing around homelessness, but how just like in the world of habitat, people come together from all walks of life, all types of businesses, community partners, doing something, finding solutions to difficult societal problems. And I walked away from Milwaukee inspired because homelessness is an issue. And all we have to do is look at some of our adjoining cities like Denver and, and know that if we are not proactive, if we do not make radical changes in the way that we deal with the unhoused, we too could find ourselves much like Denver in just a short amount of time. So it was my pleasure uh, to serve on the Housing Task Force. Um, I do believe, as we have seen with Habitat, being preventive is an important piece, but also meeting people right where they are and giving them the support and the Housing First model, I believe that we saw uh, amplified in Milwaukee showed us what is possible. And I believe this city cares about its people and they do want to make it better for every single person. So anyway, buckle up, get ready. Some <laughs> good things are coming to the city, so. Thank you, I'm John Gates, and I'm proud and honored to be your mayor. You know, when you hold a community meeting, a couple of things happen. Either four people show up, or you <laughs> fill the room. And uh, it uh, gives my heart uh, great hope that you've all come out to kind of hear what's going on um, with homelessness and to recognize that um, we are working on it. It's a community problem. We've been uh, pretty successful in getting all the key players um, to the table. We're not quite there, but we're getting close. I have just a few comments. I first want to single out Raymond Lee, our city manager. Uh, city council members Hall, McDonald, and the beauty are here. Thank you all. You know, uh, thank you. A little over a year ago, our city council tackled the question that many municipalities are tackling is that um, 
homelessness is increasing, which it is. I mean, I was on the police department here for 26 years, uh, on some time back, and we had homeless individuals in 1978 when I started as a cop. If you do the math, yeah, I'm getting up there in age. But, uh, <laughs> but have they multiplied? Yes, they have. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but we, had a, we were at the crossroads as, as a governing body of um, what do we do to address this? Lots of options. I've talked to people in our community who said, arrest them all. I've talked to people in our community who said, I think if you just ignore it, it'll go away, or just ignore it. And on uh, governing bodies like us, there's seven of us, you make a lot of decisions based on the numbers. And our city council was not uniform in how we address this issue. I'm proud to say that the ones that are in the room are uniform, but the fact is that we made a decision to have a collaborative, um, approach to um, assisting those that want out of homelessness to get out of homelessness. The point in time count that's done by United Way each year would suggest that there's a percentage, um, 20 or so percent of homeless uh, individuals that are homeless by choice, and I respect that, but how about those 70 or 80 percent that aren't homeless by choice, and do we have an obligation to assist them in finding a place? The answer that our council came up with is yes. Before Juliana um, got the rather large grant, um, we gave them money out of our budget because this is a, a community issue that has a fiscal tag, right? Nothing comes for free. Um, but the first thing that happened that was really positive is Mr. Lee went out and got this ray of sunshine, Juliana Kitten, and uh, uh, she comes to us with experience in dealing with homeless issues. She's uh, officially assistant city manager in housing and homeless solutions, but she came to us with lots of good ideas, um, and she's assembled a dynamite team, and we are uh, trudging forward and uh, taking this uh, process we're taking baby steps, but things are happening pretty quickly. What I don't think you shared, unless I was taking some notes, is that of the 60 folks that we've been case managing for the past number of months, uh, 54 of them are housed. Mm -hmm. 54 of them are housed, so what does that mean we're gonna start on, on the next group? We're identifying that group through a lot of resources, but uh, partially through the police and fire departments that deal with these individuals. Um, on a daily basis. Chief Turk and Chief Kuznick, thank you to you and your departments um, for recognizing that there is a compassionate way to deal with this. So I just want to close by saying that this is not necessarily about hearing us talk, but to provide some information, provide some resources, and probably the most important resource in the room are those that you see around the course of the room that we are using on a daily basis uh, to assist not only our um, unhoused to become housed, but to provide, the, provide them the resources that um, perhaps delineate why they're homeless in the first place. Have they fallen on hard times? Do they have uh, drug, alcohol, mental health issues? We, the answer to all of those is yes, and it's up to us to provide some solutions. So thanks for being here. Uh, we will be available for questions, and I'm gonna yield back uh, to Juliana at this time. Thank you all so much for being here. I will say, we are committed to doing an event, a community event, to update the community on what is happening with both housing and homelessness at least once a quarter. Um, and why are we doing that? One, we need people to know what's happening. And that's one of the major themes that I've been hearing from our community over the past year is that Lots of new faces at the city. Lots of great stuff seem like it's happening, but we don't really know. And we have several avenues of putting information out. And so this is just one avenue of doing that. But absolutely, we're gonna do that. Just one final thank you to all our resources. We, can, we can't do this alone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.